say good day. How you going? What do you know? Don't strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you going? Just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Welcome to the Midweek End Times News and Trends Briefing as we share major events and what is happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. Today's date is Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day and a blessed week so far. I know we all don't have a lot of time on our hands, so let's just jump into today's update. Uh, this first news article that came out of the Jews News uh, website that talks about how Israeli strikes Iran electric warfare facilities blown up south of Damascus, second explosion in four days. So powerful explosions that were reported early on Monday on the 21st of this month in um, the south part of uh, Damascus. And the Syrian military academy situated there serves as an Iran Hezbollah intelligence uh, war room and an electronic warfare facility for the Iranians. The explosion uh, were reported by Sky News in Arabic with no official confirmation or indication of what caused them. If confirmed, uh, this would appear to be the second pinpointed attack in four days on the Iran military target outside of uh, in Syria. In On the 18th of May, the fuel, arms, and ammunition depot of the Syrian air base near the Hama uh, were blown up, causing massive explosions. And despite the Syrian official denials, the number of Iran officers that were killed in this uh, attack in one of Iran's most important bases in Syria. And according to Depka's military sources, learned later the attack uh, was carried out by an unnamed ground force, which fired eight missiles at the base. Uh, this is important, especially as we continue to deal, even though this might have been south of Damascus, but more and more we're seeing the, the situation getting closer and closer together uh, with dealing with the um, prophecy of Isaiah 17, getting closer to fulfillment as we see more events like this taking place. On a, another item dealing with the Middle East, uh, this uh, came out of the Jerusalem Post, uh, talking about how Trump's team still uh, debating timing of Middle East uh, peace plan release. Uh, so the Trump administration has unveiled its plan uh, for the Israeli-Palestinian peace sometime in the coming months, but no decision has been made as to the precise timing of its release, two U.S. sources told the Jerusalem Post on Friday. The uh, Trump administration officials were responding to an Associated Press report that said that the plans would be made sometimes mid or late June, uh, so within the next month or so, uh, bearing any unexpected crisis. And uh, the uh, Isra Israeli officials had uh, previously signaled to the Post that they expect the U.S. plan to come shortly down after the uh, U.S. embassy that opened, which took place uh, last week in Jerusalem. So for weeks, the uh, White House officials have said that their plan is nearly complete and they are simply waiting for the right time uh, to sell it. And so this is an important piece that uh, is being played, especially in the end times, where a peace deal has to be in place for the Antichrist because he confirms a covenant. So whether this is that covenant or there might be others that will be like this, we don't know. But we do know that a peace plan has to be in place for the Antichrist. Christ to confirm. So maybe there's going to be an escalation, there's going to be war, there's going to be Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, and then a peace plan is implemented. We don't know, but we do know all these are pieces of the puzzle, and uh, some pieces will come closer uh, together than others. On a separate uh, news item, uh, according to Jews News, there is a, an, a report that talked about how 57 Muslim nations urged to besiege Israel with a united Islamic army. So the Turkish newspaper close to uh, President of Turkey, uh, Erdogan, and his ruling party urged some 57 Islamic nations to build a joint um, army specifically to attack Israel. And so this news uh, that talks uh, about this 
uh, from this uh, Middle East Research Institute reported that this article uh, in the, the paper's website under the title, What if an army of Islam was formed against Israel? So it was published shortly ahead of the summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which has 57 members. And the article also notes that uh, such a joint army will greatly exceed the army of Israel in manpower, equipment, budget, and, and presents statistics to prove this. It also advocates establishing joint bases for the army's ground, air, naval forces that will arrive from all over the Muslim worlds to besieged uh, Israel, noting that of Pakistan is the only nuclear country that has special status among the IOC countries. Uh, the report said. So this is kind of something that we're going to see taking place, especially with Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83. All these different nations are going to attack Israel, but God will hand his, have his hand upon Israel. Uh, so, But it's interesting to see the these reports coming up more frequently. Also, uh, in dealing with Israel and the attack of Israel, an interesting report came out of the Front Page Mag uh, website that talks about thousands of Gaza uh, Hamas thugs attack Israel for $100 a day. So Hamas supporters in Gaza uh, held the world's first peaceful protest with hand grenades and pipe bombs and clever uh, and, and uh, cleavers and guns and 10 uh, explosive devices were peacefully detonated. And there were outbursts of peaceful gunfire over the dozens of kites flying, uh, carrying firebombs that were sent into Israel that started some 23 peaceful fires. And so the Israeli soldiers uh, peacefully defended their country, uh, leaving uh, multiple Hamas attackers at peace. And so again, there's a sarcasm through all this because it's not peaceful whatsoever. Um, but the uh, article continues to go on where it talks about how we will tear down the border. Hamas prime minister had uh, peacefully vowed we will tear out their hearts uh, from their bodies. Uh, it's only the hearts of this terror thug that tore out the already bleeding with sympathy for the Islamic terrorists. A Hamas mob chanted Alu Akbar in the, uh, in the uh, genocidal uh, racist threats of... Um, the the Kabar Kabar, uh, which is a reference to the primal Islamic massacre of the Jews, uh, while Israeli defense force uh, soldiers held back the invaders. Uh, the jets of the Israeli air force targeted the snake's head, striking Hamas compounds and outposts by 5:30 p.m. The Hamas organizers changed course and began urging the thugs away from the further. Uh, fence attacks. And so Hamas has offered $100 for every rioter. Uh, during the previous violent assault back in April, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood terrorists had uh, been offering $200 to anyone shot by Israelis, 500 for severe injuries, and 3,000 to the dead. 100 may not seem like a lot, but the Israeli uh, teen soldiers uh, they're trying to kill, they earn $13 a day. So Hamas supporting thugs are uh, depicted as helpless, starving victims who can barely lift firebombs uh, they're throwing at the Israelis, but they make ten times as much as the Israeli soldiers uh, that they're there to kill. Hamas can write all those checks to its aspiring killers because the cash is coming from Iran, as we've mentioned before, that Iran's the number one terror sponsor in the world because they're funding Hezbollah, they're funding the uh, Palestinians and the uh, Hamas and uh, other terrorist uh, organizations like that. We also see how um, that last year, Swenbar, uh, from whom Israel had released an exchange for a captured Israeli hostage in uh, Gilead Shalhat uh, that boasted that Iran was once again the largest backer financially and materially, and that comes out of the estimated $100 million a year. As many as 50,000 Hamas supporters in Gaza participating in the day's attack at $100 a head with over 1,000 alleged injured, at least 200 each, uh, another uh, 52 alleged killed, that's 3,000 each. There's no reason uh, to treat Hamas casualty figures coming out of Gaza as anything other than propaganda.
And so the whole thing cost Hamas and Iran $5.3 million. And the unmarked cargo plane filled with foreign currency that Obama had dispatched to Iran carrying $400 million was a part known as $1.7 billion in cash payments. But the total Obama terror payments to Tehran may go as high as $33.6 billion dollars. So this is how Iran is able to fund uh, and support all these other organizations. And despite the media misreporting, the Hamas mass fence attack began back on March 30th. And uh, even though the Great March of Return has supposed to end in the uh, middle of May, so sometime this week or so, uh, to show prove to be unexpected popular in Tehran, Brussels, Berkeley, and attacks that will continue through at least June. Even a single one of um, uh, Obama's cash smuggling runs to Iran is enough to fund attacks just like these uh, for two and a half months. And the $100,000 of the Iran grape uh, offered anyone who would blow up the embassy. And so the illegal cash run to pay for uh, bounties on every American diplomat uh, facilities in the world. And um, this is the rhetoric that uh, we have to hear and see uh, on a regular basis in the attacks to, on Israel. And uh, But we see how the, the, the finance is being funded, and partly thanks to Obama and his uh, uh, administration to fund terrorism and to, uh, and again, he should be... Um, you know, arrested for treasoning and locked up into prison for life for that. Anyways, that's a whole separate uh, issue there. On a separate news item, and this one's taking place in Europe, as you're seeing the collapse of so many countries and you're seeing uh, just the devastation uh, from the Islamic invasion that's happened and the migration um, uh, within these countries, uh, Sweden, uh, what they did, uh, this report came out of The Guardian that talks about how they distribute uh, to be prepared for war leaflets to all 4.8 million homes. And so the Swedish government began sending all um, 4.8 million of the country's households a public information leaflet telling the population for the first time in more than a half a century what to do in event of war. And so if a crisis or war comes, explains how people can secure basic needs such as food, water, and, and heat, and warning signals, uh, means, and uh, where to find bomb shelters, and how to contribute to Sweden's total defense. The 20-page pamphlet illustrates the pictures of sirens, warplanes, families fleeing their homes, also prepares the population for dangers such as cyber and terror attacks and climate change which is a hoax, anyways, and includes uh, a page on identifying fake news. Although uh, Sweden is safer than many of the other countries, there are still threats to uh, the security and independence, the brochure says, and if you are prepared, you are contributing to improving the ability of the country to cope with a major strain. Similar le leaflets were distributed uh, in neutral uh, Sweden uh, back in 1943 at the height of the Second World War. And so these updates were issued regularly in the general public until 1961 and then to local and national government officials until 1991. Society is vulnerable and so we need to prepare ourselves as individuals as the Swedish Civil Contingency Agency, which is in charge of this particular project. His name is Dan Ellison. And... Um, there's also information uh, defect in terms and concrete advice uh, in which uh, they aim to provide. And I wonder if the country's doing this because A, they know something's up and so they want to prepare people, or B, this is a distraction, it's a deterrent and uh, for what could be uh, other things taking place. And so there's a couple uh, scenarios that you can look into that, but uh, it's one of those interesting news articles that you see what's happening in Europe, as we know that there's going to be a lot of events that are going to take place and how there's going to be this uh, one world government eventually that uh, the Antichrist will rule. 
Uh, last item, uh, some of you probably read this uh, report. Uh, many of the news uh, um, outlets uh, gave this particular story. Uh, this one comes out of the sun uh, for, um, and this is kind of more or less dealing with apostasy, but again, you see how far this current pope has pushed this particular agenda where the article talks about how God loves you. Pope Francis tells gay men, uh, and God made you like this and loves you like this. So he tells this gay man that God loves him during a private meeting, uh, it's claimed to be. And in this private dialogue, the pontiff understood to have told uh, Carlos uh, Juan Carlos Cruz, a victim of sexual abuse at the hands of the Catholic priest, that God loves gay people and it's fine to be homosexual. These comments are the most uh, striking public acceptance about homosexuality ever made by the head of the Roman Catholic Church. The remarks were made during a private meeting at the Vatican uh, between the pair, which the Pope offered a heartfelt apology. Cruz was a victim of Chile's most notorious pedophile priest, uh, Fernando Car Cardoma. Uh, uh, Father Cardoma, was now, who is now uh, 87 years old, was found guilty of sexual abuse by the Vatican in 2011. Cruz claims that his suffering was ignored by a number of Latin American bishops who used his own homosexuality to brand him a liar when he spoke out. And so speaking to the Spanish newspaper, uh, Cruz said that the uh, Pope told me, Juan Carlos, that you are gay and does not matter. God made you like this and he loves you like this and I don't care. The Pope uh, loves you like this and uh, you have to be happy with who you are. So the Pope's uh, word signaled a much more open, inclusive uh, approach to the often restrictive faith and uh, a move which likely upset many conservative Catholics. The Vatican has neither confirmed nor denied the comments that uh, the pontiff made to Cruz. And so the Catholic teaches um, that gay sex and all sex outside of heterosexual marriage is sin. Uh, this isn't the first time that Pope Francis' comments have suggested a more open, tolerant attitude toward homosexuality. In uh, July 2013, when responding to a reporter's question about the existence of an alleged gay lobby within the Vatican, Pope Francis says, If a person is gay and seeks God and has goodwill, who am I to judge? And so the pontiff's uh, most recent remarks come at the very uh, severe high-profile members of the clergy that have sought to make public uh, amends with the gay Catholics and whom they say they feel shunned uh, and unwelcomed in the church. The sad thing is there's going to be many people who are going to accept this if this, if this article is true, and the Pope did say that, that uh, many are going to accept that uh, statement from the Pope. The truth is, yes, God loves us, but he doesn't make people gay or not gay or uh, that God just tolerates sin. That is a choice. God has been very clear in the scriptures concerning creation and our sexuality and homosexuality is a sin, just like fornication, adultery, pride and greed and the list of sins goes on. Sin is sin in the eyes of God. Christ died for all sin, and he has come to set us free from the bondage of sin. And he's called us to live holy lives before him, living those lives that are pleasing to the Lord. And so it would seem that the Pope here, by this statement, is giving permission uh, for the people to continue in their sinful behavior. And my prayer is that people would repent of their sin and that we get right with the Lord and walk holy and righteous lives. And that they receive Christ as the Lord and Savior. We're saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. And, and I hope that as many people would be able to listen, um, that they would surrender their lives to the Lord, uh, to, to surrender to Christ before it's too late either before the rapture or um, or by death. Our, our days are numbered. We don't know when our last day is going to be here. Uh, 
And so we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. We need to stay in his word. And I hope and I pray that our lives would make a difference for the glory of God to those around us. Amen. Until next time, God bless.